Welcome to another edition of Hiroyuki Terara, Diaries of a Master Sushi Chef. Hiro, how are you today? Hey, good. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Very good. All right, so what's in the kitchen today? What's, okay. What are we doing? We are going to make you chicken katsu. Chicken katsu? We call it chicken katsu. Okay. Uh, it's like a chicken milanesa in Latin cuisine. We call it chicken milanesa. Okay. It's the same, same kind of idea. Um, earlier, we just uh, you know, open up the chicken. That meat and what meat is in here. Okay. And the uh, pango. Pango. Okay, which is Japanese yeah. breadcrumbs. And, uh, and then flowers. Just regular flour? Mm -hmm. Okay. And then we're gonna use the uh, egg. Okay. So, yeah, you find this in Italian restaurants, Milanese, there's also Latin restaurants. Latin restaurants also, we have a Milanese. Right. So what's the difference between this and say one of the other Latin recipes? I think, uh, which I ate the uh, uh, Latin restaurant Milanesa is more they make more, more making meat making more thinner. Right. And of course panko press is a little bit different. They use more like a, more like a powder kind okay. of panko they were using too. And then sometimes they have a brand of cheese or kind of vegetables and they turn it over. Right. Uh, I don't know. Like a parmigiana. Kind of parmigiana yeah, yeah. chicken or something. Mm -hmm. like that. But uh, in Japan, actually, katsu is more uh, pork katsu is more uh, popular. So okay. I'm katsu. And I really like the pork katsu. Sure. We call it tonkatsu. Tonkatsu, yes. With, with uh, uh, tonkatsu sauce, we right. have a kind of brownie uh, vegetable sauce. Okay. So, uh, unfortunately, today we don't have this one, so I don't use uh, the same of tonkatsu sauce. I want to use the tartar sauce. Okay. But uh, I like the tonkatsu sauce too. Sounds okay. good. So let's make it. Okay, uh, let's go. Chicken katsu. So, okay, so I'm going to use uh, dark meats. I like dark meats anyway. Dark meats more uh, juicy. Even though with the skin. Okay, oh, with the skin as well. Okay. Never had it with the skin before, but. Yeah. And, uh, okay, one, one, one side of chicken, uh, dark meats, and then white meats. So that's okay. Let's use two different uh, meats. So, first step, I need to take a little bit of water. But the same as like that tempura, so water is no good. Or right. You know, take out some water out. Water with the hot oil is no good. It yeah. actually starts crackling and uh, so boiling over, overloading. And the uh, next step is, I want to do uh, a little bit. This way I'm going to do cut a little bit. And so you just score it a little bit, cut a little bit. Cut a little too. Thin it out a little, okay. Yeah, no Latin cultures. They take a little, like a hammer, and just yeah, they're just flying it out, making it flat. Yeah, tenderizer. This is good. Okay, next step is going to be uh, we're going to have the salt and pepper. And then uh, next one is I need to make uh, eggs. Okay. How many eggs for this? I'm gonna do uh, four piece, um, the pork, four eggs. Okay. Of course, should be enough. For Please, I'm gonna put the chicken on the flour, and the next one to that eggs and panko. And the panko, okay. So very similar to right. however else. So one, else. two, three steps. Okay, very good. Okay. An egg wash, okay. And okay. the reason why you dip it in flour just so it catches the egg, and the egg catches the panko coating. Yes. Exactly. If not, the egg will just come right off the yeah. chicken. Okay. okay. And panko. Just a little bit. Panko again is Japanese. Uh, like bread, uh, yeah, like breading. Breadcrumbs, yeah. 
can find it in many supermarkets already. Yes, and the same way. Panko. Okay, just a little bit. Okay. What temperature is oil? Is what should it be? 350. 350? Yeah, okay. Not finger into the oil. Yeah, let's not do that. <laughs> So 350 is not that hot. You just want to make sure that it's in there longer and it's not burnt outside and the heat can get all the way to the center of the piece of chicken. That is a key. And how can you tell here? How can the fans at home tell when they're doing this at home when the chicken's ready? When the chicken's ready? Yeah, how can they tell? Um, by the, you think by the yeah, you can see that texture of the chicken? Yeah, and the color too, you know. It's, it's getting more, uh, uh, panko is getting more brown. Okay. So that's one another thing. And then when the meat's stiffer, you know, oh, when so it's stiff, it's... I'm gonna, I'm gonna show you, after, after chicken is done, I'm gonna show you how to see the uh, chicken is well done on Okay. And how long, is you, how long do you think it should be in there for? It's gonna be... At least three, uh, four minutes. Okay, uh, about four minutes. minutes. Uh, it's also the, depend on the thickness. Yes. Today chicken is not so thick, so... Okay. And here we had the luxury of having a commercial fryer. When it flows to the top, you know, generally it's pretty much done. Mm. And uh, how would you check, Hero? Yeah. How would you check to see yeah. if it's ready okay. or not? Yeah, actually, I can tell this is done. You can tell? How, how I'm going to check? I'm going to show you. Okay. What is a bamboo skewer? Okay. Let me just put it here. It's more easy. Okay, so we're gonna hold in the bamboo, bamboo skewer. Right. So most of the thick up area around here. You just, you just put it here. And wait, one, two, three, right? Yes. And just seconds. put it right here. It's hot. It's hot? You can see. Okay. You can feel it. So that's the down. All right. So Got you it. can use this technique for any type of the fried stuff. Okay. Same way you can check it's a good uh, one. Yeah, it looks great. This is cut soon. All right. All right. Okay. Try to ready. Uh, decoration parts. Okay. Right here. That's perfect, Tucker. Okay. okay. This is a uh, white meat side. Oh, almost I cut my finger. Sometimes happen like this. Be careful. So, yeah. Looks great here. The color of this is just beautiful. Okay, now the plating. Yes, I'm gonna do the plating right now. This and a uh, uh, cabbage. You know? Okay. Very typical Japanese. Okay. Yeah. This covers a, a lot of cabbage anyway. A lot of this cabbage anyway. And carrots. Maybe too much, but I like this one. Uh, watercress. And the, uh, today we have uh, a tartar sauce. Tartar sauce. Yeah, so, so this is something definitely our fans at home can get a hold of. Right, so this Actually, everything. We make this at home very, very simply. You can make fish. Katsu, if you like, you can make yeah, pork katsu. katsu. How about beef? I don't see beef too much, but it's not so popular. Okay. Uh, beef katsu, but uh, it's not interesting. <laughs> I see that in Latin and Italian cooking. Uh, 
sam bym w tym też pogadać, gdzie jest. I play looks great here. Very simple. A chicken katsu. Let's take a look at this. Another beautiful plate. Something so simple that can be done at home. Well, thank you so much, Hero. Really enjoy that. And we will see you in the next episode. Thank you. And again, the best part of this video, Hero? Yes. Eating parts. Eating parts. And what's the line you say in Japanese? Itadakimasu. Arigato. <laughs> after, after you eat it, it's the arigato. After you eat it? Yeah. Okay. okay. Uh, you can add a little hot sauce. And if your head chef, your master chef that taught you, saw you dipping this in tartar sauce, what would he say? Hmm? If your chef, the chef you learned from, saw you I dipping it in tartar sauce, tartar yeah, sauce? what would he say? What are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> but it's not bad, you know? Actually, many people don't even know. I mean, you first started in the kitchen. This is one of your skills. The first thing you jumped onto after making rice was on the tempura station. Mm -hmm. And you were... When I started uh, doing that. working in the kitchen, mm -hmm. first of my position was actually... Of course, I do start a dishwasher too. But I uh, started a station. And also, the uh, next one is the kind of vegetables. For roast vegetables. And uh, this one is... Uh, I was at the tempura station. Okay. I fly up the tempura all day. Wow. And then after tempura station, where did you go? Uh, then after I went to uh, cleaning, cleaning uh, fish. Cleaning fish, okay. But of, of course, in uh, the tempura section, I need to make a stretch shrimp, everything. I need to take the shell off and uh, stretch it. Okay. So it was, how uh, long ago? It's almost 26, 7 years ago. So that's how a stretch shrimp. Right now, you can buy, you know, the shrimp come with a stretch already. Sure. So you can very easy. This one, but uh, that back to 26 years ago, you have to go piece by piece, you have to switch off. Yeah, the old days. The shrimp is a frozen one, you have to defrost and take the shell off, right? And then take the vein out and then switch it. And after the tempura station, you went to cleaning fish, and after cleaning fish, you did yes, cleaning fish. First step I was to practice with the macaroni, okay, to make it today. And uh, then after you know, they teach me a little bit of different fish, okay. And then after they showed me uh, how to clean up the like octopus, all different fishes, and then sashimi, the way cut sashimi. Okay. And uh, some sushi stuff. Uh, anyway, step by step. Nice. Alright. Well thank you so much, Hero. Thank you very much. And we'll see you in the next episode. Arigato. Bye, thank you. If you like this video, please don't forget to give us a thumbs up. Please comment, please share, and please don't forget to subscribe. That way we can keep you updated on our latest videos. Bye-bye.